Dr. Dorsey, welcome. Thank you very much for having me, Rena. Delighted to be with you. Many people know somebody that has had a brain disease, like Alzheimer's or Parkinson's disease. And if you ask a doctor, most likely they'll say that there's nothing that we can do about these diseases. But Dr. Dorsey, you say that these diseases, like Alzheimer's and Parkinson's, are man-made and entirely preventable if we avoid certain toxins and certain foods. It's really common uh, for Alzheimer's disease. One in three of us who live to 85 will develop Alzheimer's disease. Uh, said another way, if you and your spouse or partner um, uh, aspire to live to 85, there's a more than 50% chance that at least one of you will have Alzheimer's disease. Uh, Parkinson's disease is the world's fastest growing brain disease. Today in the United States alone, 200 people will be diagnosed with it and another 100 people will die with it. And um, in general, brain diseases are now the world's leading source of disability, more than cancer, more than heart disease, more than infectious infectious disease and brain disease is also the second world's second leading cause of death. So why is this happening? I think for many of these diseases, especially uh, Parkinson's, but also uh, diseases like ALS or Lou Gehrig's disease and Alzheimer's, even autism and intellectual disabilities, I think chemicals in our environment, especially in our food, water, and air are fueling the rise of these diseases, including Parkinson's disease. Many of these diseases are new. Uh, they've only been recently described in the last 100 or 200 years. When they were initially described, they were really rare, and now they're growing uh, rapidly uh, and destroying lives, uh, families, and, and uh, crippling society. There is nothing natural about developing Alzheimer's or Parkinson's. You put a laboratory mouse in the lab for years, they don't spontaneously develop Parkinson's disease. Generally speaking, they don't spontaneously develop Alzheimer's disease. These diseases are not by and large, for some, there's always there are genetic components to some of these diseases. But by and large, these are not natural consequences of aging. No more than smoking, no more than lung cancer is a natural consequence of aging. If you don't smoke cigarettes, you're very unlikely to develop uh, lung cancer. If you don't get exposed to these chemicals, you're really, 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 really unlikely to develop uh, Parkinson's disease. If you're not exposed to air pollution, your risk of developing Alzheimer's disease is dramatically reduced. Now. These diseases have genetic components to them. About 15% of people with uh, Parkinson's disease have a family history of the disease. Said another way, 85% don't. And about 15% of people have an identifiable genetic risk factor uh, for Parkinson's disease. But only 1% of individuals with Parkinson's disease have Parkinson's disease due to purely genetic uh, cause. For the vast majority of people who have a genetic risk factor, the majority of those people with that genetic risk factor will never go on to develop Parkinson's disease. There have to be other factors that cause people, even with genetic causes, to go on to develop the disease. Well, I'm a Parkinson's specialist, so almost all everyone that I see has a Parkinson's disease. And I think for almost all of these individuals, a Parkinson's is preventable. You know, um, I'm a neurologist, so I go around looking for Parkinson's disease, you know, when I'm in the airport, when I'm walking or biking. Um, and when I see someone with Parkinson's disease, I get pissed off uh, because I think it's preventable. And I know the suffering that people are going to uh, encounter in the future. I know the suffering that their friends and families are, are going to experience. And I think that for the vast majority of people, this is entirely preventable. And there's no reason that people need to have suffering. You know, suffering is part of the human condition, but needless preventable suffering should be prevented. Many of my colleagues are much more skeptical about uh, the environmental causes. And quite frankly, I was too. Um, about six years ago, I had the gift of a sabbatical as an ac academic. And I read the work of my uh, colleague, Dr. Caroline Tanner, who's not only a Parkinson specialist like me, but also an epidemiologist as a PhD in epidemiology from the University of California, Berkeley. And I read her work for the last 40 years, and she's been politely and quietly and kindly telling us that Parkinson's disease is due to environmental causes. 25 years ago, she did landmark study looking at rates of Parkinson's disease among identical twins and fraternal twins. And if something has a really high genetic component, identical twins are going to have a really high concordance rate. They're both likely to carry the disease, whereas fraternal twins uh, who don't uh, share the same genome are going to have uh, be less likely to have it. She found that there was no difference between identical twins and fraternal twins in their likelihood of both carrying the disease, suggesting that for the vast majority of individuals with Parkinson's disease, genetics is only a small contributing factor and environmental causes are the principal causes uh, of the disease. And she told us this 25 years ago. 